Hello and welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. This is part six of our video series, how to build a web page using Tailwind CSS and Alpine JS. In the last video, we created the drop-down menu using Alpine JS. In this video, we continue working with the navigation drop-down and make it responsive for mobile. Let's go. First, we will add the sandwich icon. So if you minimize the browser, this sandwich icon will appear for mobile devices. Let's go to our code and add this mobile icon under the logo element here. So this element just has an A uh, tag inside and an image, which is again taken from our icons 8 library. So let's add a few classes to the A tag here, like height and width. So height 12, width of 12 too. So the container is bigger than the element. Let's position the image exactly in the middle. So let's convert it to a flex element with items center. This will center the image uh, vertically and justify center this will center it horizontally course or pointer this gives the pointer a nice icon and hover we would like to change the background color to a gray with 700 shading which is a bit lighter than the uh, navigation background and also with round the corners so rounded LG. Let's go to our page and have a look. There we go. The icon is implemented. Now let's hide the navigation on mobile. So let's go to our navigation element here and add a class of hidden and also MD block. So what this means is, uh, because Tailwind CSS is a mobile first system, uh, we have to add different behaviors for non-mobile screens. And in this example, the nav item will be hidden on mobile, but on medium sized devices, it will be displayed as a block element. Um, you can inspect all the Tailwind media queries breakpoints on the official documentation. So let's quickly have a look. Let's go to their uh, website. Here we have the customizing screens page where we can see all the Tailwind uh, breakpoints. So in my project I only use one uh, breakpoint, the MD. So if, if when I write this MD modifier it means width of 768 pixels and above. So if there's no modifier it's mobile and above and if there is a MD it's 768 pixels and above. On our page so on mobile there's a sandwich icon and on medium screens and above the navigation is shown. So now let's hide the sandwich icon on medium screens Let's go to our mobile icon here, add a class of MD colon hidden. There we go. Now it's hidden. And the mobile, it appears. So now let's implement the functionality. If I click on it, I want the navigation to appear. So let's go to the header, let's initialize uh, alpine.js with x hyphen data. Now we create a, a variable in curly brackets. Mobile nav open, this is the variable. And we set it to false. Because when we come first to the page, the mobile 
nav is not open. Okay, let's go to the A here. Let's add the click event. So if I click on the A here, I want the mobile nav open to turn into true. So toggle between false and true. Mobile nav open. So it starts as at false, but if I click on it, it will turn true and vice versa. And now I go to the nav element here and write x hyphen show equals mobile nav open. So let's test this. So if I click here, it should show, but it does not do that. This is because we have still have the hidden class on this element, which seems to be stronger than the Alpine JS code. So let's get rid of this one because this is now handled with JavaScript. Test it again. And there we go. It works. So if I refresh the page, you can see there is a little blip here again. The nav element appears for milliseconds. So we can get rid of this behavior by just adding here the x hyphen cloak element. And there is no more blip now. Next, we would like to position the nav element underneath the top bar. So at the moment it's here, but we would like it to move down. So what we the structure we have at the moment, this is uh, the header is a flex element. We have the logo here, the mobile icon and the nav. But the mobile we would like to have the logo and the mobile icon as a flex element here. And on desktop, we would like this element and this element as a flex. So let's create an additional diff here. And move the logo and the mobile icon in there. Now let's add some classes to this diff. So this will be a flex item as well with items center again and justify between and the height of 20. This element will only be flex on medium screen, so MD flex. Okay, then let's check it out. So it should move down now. There we go, perfect. So we're missing now the navigation on the desktop screen. And this is because Alpine.js is overwriting our CSS. Let's add an exclamation mark here, which means important and force it to be displayed. Let's check this and there we go. It appears now on medium screen sizes as well. Okay, now let's add a close icon. So we add the close item just um, below the sandwich icon here. Again, same width and height. And again, from the icons A library. And what we're gonna say here, x hyphen show equals mobile nav open so we have to have negate here show this sandwich icon when a mobile nav is not open and show the closing icon when the mobile nav is open there we go works if you refresh the page you can see the blip again here. So 
let's just include a x cloak element on the closing icon so we don't see the blip and I also include a select none class on both icons so users can select the icons. Okay, next let's add the background to our navigation. So in here, let's add a background of gray, gray 800. The height should be full screen height and the width should be full screen too. But for medium sizes, the height should be auto and the width should be auto too. Let's check this one out. There we go, perfect. Now we have a bedding problem here. This is caused by the header having this PX8. We would like the children to have this PX8. So, so let's write in square brackets, add level deeper to all the children. This is with the star, square bracket closed and colon. This should now apply to the children. And there we go. Now let's lay out the elements on mobile in a vertical direction, uh, not horizontally like on desktop. So if you go to our UL element here, we can say flex call. So that means on mobile position the elements in a column and on medium screen size, flex row. So position them in a row. There we go. Let's check if it's still okay on desktop. Yes. Now let's add a bit of a gap on mobile. So gap of eight, but on medium gap zero. Okay. Now let's position the element in the middle of the screen. So we say justify. center now justify center in a in a flex column means um, center it vertically and we also have to declare the height of full there we go now as you see it's not centered in the middle though and that's because it's um, the, the height of the top bar is still included. So let's add a minus margin to the nav. So because our header element has age 20, let's add here a minus margin of 20 as well. And on medium sized devices, MT of zero. It's, it's almost in the center. There's still the, the height of the scroll bar here. So let's position our UL also a bit more top. So we use the translate class. So minus translate on the Y axis and of 10, but on medium sizes, we have tron 
translate minus y of 0. OK, how oh, it seems in the middle. But now we can click the close item because our element here is above the x. To fix that, we um, change it to our absolute position element and change the z index. So let's go to our nav element here again. All right, absolute. And on medium, we leave it at relative. And we apply a set index of minus 1. Check it out. And now the closing icon works. Now let's implement the sliding effect, as we see here. OK. Let's add the code in our nav element. So we have an x hyphen transition element, um, call an enter. So the duration is 300 and the styling is ease out. It should start with opacity of zero and it should have a position of minus 96 on the y axis. And the endpoint and the transition end should have opacity of 100 and the position should be at zero, so it should be in place. Let's check it out. There we go, nice smooth sliding. One other thing I would like to change is the, is the clip at the, the title here. Uh, it takes a millisecond to load the special font and you see the, the standard font appear for a millisecond. So I'm going to change that with a CSS animation. Let's go to our code. Let's go to the, the title here. Let's add a class of title blip. And add some classes in the style sheet. So it's an animation of one second. It's using the fade in uh, animation. So here we have the keyframes. At 0%, the opacity is 0. At 10% of the time, it's still 0. So we have a slight delay here. And on 100% of the time, we have opacity 1. So with this, we get rid of the clip. OK, save it. Back to the browser. Let's check it out. There we go. The clip is gone. And we have a smooth fading in animation on the title. So that's all for now. In the next one, we will look at the sidebar on mobile screens. See you there.